Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. Now, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are right now, whether you've listened to any posting by me before or not, I want you to sit down, take a seat, and listen. And if you're walking around, I want you to put your mugs in, your, your, your bugs in, and I want you to walk quietly. And I want you to listen. I got a message for you that uh, I'm going to tell you whether you believe it or not, but I'm going to share it with you. There was once a time when people believed in life. They believed that it would be something that they could truly enjoy. Many folks still believe it today. But for those of you who were baby boomers or came sometime earlier than that, you've been living this long and where's that dream? Where's that hope you've been waiting on? Is it here? Nah, and if you think that is coming, go back and call your mother, call your grandmother, call your great-grandmother, call your great-great-grandmother and your great-great-great-grandmother. And in other words, just call all the way back to Adam and Eve and find out what happened to it because it has not made it here yet. And it's time that somebody just take a chance and tell you and I'll take that chance because based upon what I have seen in my lifetime, I was put here for a particular purpose. I was put here for the specific reference of sharing with you today how far you are from pleasing what is pleasing and how close you are to dive into what you think you're running from. But I want to share with you a few thoughts. You remember the story about Cain and Abel. I'm sure you do. Well, Cain and Abel, for some strange reason, we would have to say were divided in that there was a major occurrence that happened between the two that they have taught us to stay away from. Adam and Eve, in the end, they had situations that they could not solve. And so one ended up killing the other. Now, you might ask yourself over and over again, how can siblings do that? How can two brothers raised up in the same household end up having such an animosity or envy toward one another that they would end up killing each other? Well, if you give that some thought, where could that have come from? The reference is and the inference is that there were no other two people on the earth but their mother and the father, Adam and Eve. So if there was a problem between Cain and Abel, you can bet your last money it was visualized, it was established from the parents. So what I'm basically saying is there was a problem between Adam and Eve. We find out later on in the story that some voice in the garden spoke to Eve and got Eve to comply but could not get Adam to comply, which indicates that even at that time, there was a major dispute. There was a major problem between the two. There was no harmony. There was no cohesiveness. And so what you found was a creation of an environment that ended up affecting Cain and Abel in such a way to one ended up taking the other's life. <clears throat> but what does that remind you of? It can't remind you of anything other than or something as simple as conservatism and liberalism. Now, when I think of conservatism and liberalism, I think of Adam and Eve. When I think of that, I think of Republicans and Democrats. And when I think of that, I think of Cain and Abel. You just heard my evaluation on that. But look at here. Conservative and, or should I say, conservative republics, or should I say re conservative republicans, they view God as themselves. They call themselves superior, that they deserve all of the benefits. And if there are any left over, then they can go to the others. So we call that conservatism. We're the best. We do the best. We give the best. We are the best. We deserve the best. We deserve the most. Now they came up with that this is what they came up with. They came up with a plan that satisfied them and screwed over you. And that has been the problem since that time. Well, something told me, or and I'm here to tell you, 
that the power that's invisible, that you can't see, that you can't touch, yet all of the evidence of its existence is here, says that there is an unlimited amount of resources prepared for everyone on the face of this planet. But we, under the form of conservatism, we, under the form of those who say that they're superior to us, have casted off that requirement that says we are each other's keeper, that says we are responsible for, to each, for each other, and say that if you got the money, brother, you take care of yourself. And so someone has come up with something called money, where they can dictate who gets the money, and they can dictate who is somebody, or who is nobody, who is conservative, who's liberal, who's Cain, and who's Abel, Abel. So, in fact, what we're basically saying is that to people who think like this, money is God. Because, think about it, if you don't have the money, the family can be against you, the community against you, your children against you, your spouse against you, doesn't matter if you man or woman. If one got the money and the other doesn't have the money, you better go take a bath. <laughs> Yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, I watched the um, confirmation of a gentleman who wants to be in the Supreme Court Justice. His name was Brett Kavanaugh. And I listened to a young lady who alleged some, uh, some strange things that happened years and years ago by Kavanaugh, Miss uh, Ford, I believe. And when she spoke, she spoke with an authenticity that people were able to receive and accept right, readily. And so, after speaking, people were thinking that, hey, these conservatives got a hard road to toe. But the conservatives who had planned this thing out to the last inch had made sure that they would come back strong. And they came back with a gentleman that sounded just like Donald Trump. He was talking bold and loud and mad and angry and crying. And I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, those activities right there are nothing but the activities of a con artist. He's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. And you are going to trust him. I said, I started to say you better not, but you don't know any better. So you're going to trust him. But he's just as corrupt as anybody else could possibly be corrupt. That woman did not stand on that stage and say this man did these things to her. If he didn't. But what else was he going to say? Well, I did it, and I'm sorry, I was just a kid, and I didn't know any better. Please forgive me. Hell no, he was not going to say that. He was going to say exactly what he said. Not only that, those people who, 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 who put him up there to be the judge, who, who, this is nothing new. They knew exactly what this man had done. In fact, they are so sure of what he's done, that is why he's in a the position. They need someone in the position that they can control, just like Trump. Trump is in office not because Democrats made a mistake. Trump is in office because that's who they wanted in office. They wanted Trump in office, somebody who can do some foolish things, somebody who can bring this nation down, and the people do not have the balls enough to stand up and resist. And he is getting away with everything that he talked about doing when he was campaigning. And all of those people who talked against him, who talked about how full of crap he was, how demonic he was, every last one I'm going with him. Step by step. Did you hear Lindsey Graham last night talking to Trump's counterpart? Did you hear just exactly what he was saying? He was saying, ladies and gentlemen, we don't give a darn about what the Democrats are talking about. We don't give a darn about what who anybody's talking about. We want this man because he can protect us. He can protect who and what we are. He can protect our conservativeness. He can protect our superiority. He will do all these things because we got him by the balls and if he won't, we will squeeze. Now, don't you think that this is something that just happened? No, ladies and gentlemen, it is planned from the beginning and it will be planned to the end. But you know, when you think about stuff like that, you think about guys like Esau and Isaac, two brothers caught in the same situation as Cain and Abel. They were ready to take it out. They were ready to screw take somebody down, but there was another power working that prevented the death of one of these at that time. 
But what I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, is that there is nothing new under the sun. Everything that exists has existed before. And until you get something new from a new voice, you're going to continue to repeat it. I'm standing before you today because I got a new voice. And I want you to hear me good. I'd like to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, who, you know, we got a state government and we got the state Supreme Court. We got a national federal government and we got the national federal Supreme Court. But is there a court bigger than that? You would think so. Look like they would have a court that has to do with life. The ultimate court. And that's what I'm here to tell you about. Talk to you about that ultimate court. I had put a couple of notes on the side, but I don't think I'll take any extra time doing that. I just want to take it to you like this. I'd like to ask, and if I could, ask every individual, not just in Minnesota, every individual, not just in the United States, but if I ask every individual on the face of the earth today, how many of them would like to live without oxygen? They won't even answer because it's impossible. If I ask how many of them would like to live without the blood flowing through their veins, they wouldn't answer because it is impossible. If I ask them how many wanted to live without food, clothing, and shelter, every last one of them would say yes because they know they can't live without food. They're going to need shelter to protect them from the elements. And they're going to need clothes to hide their shame. Now ask me what shame, but they're going to need it. And if they're going to progress, you ask each of them, which one of them would like to be denied education? Not just any education, but the education that would prepare them to be the best that they could possibly be for the dream that they have had all their lives, for something they've just been waiting to do, have a hunger to do, a thirst to do. How many of them would say, nobody, oh, I got nothing. Every last one of them got a dream. Every last one of them got an ambition. Every human on the earth got an ambition. Somebody say, well, I've run across a lot of lazy people. I've never ran across a lazy person in my life. I ran across people who didn't want to do that job or that job or that job. But I've never ran across a person who didn't want to do any job. They just want to do the job that they want to do. They want to do the job they were designed to do. You wouldn't ask a car to do the work of a truck. It's not going to happen. So if you got work for a car, work for a truck, you got work for a man, you got work for a woman, you got work for one man, you got work for another man. Come on, y'all. Anyway, if I ask you how many of you would like to be sick and resist health care, not a single one of you would want to be sick. In fact, you get so sick, you beg for somebody to help you take your own life. Nobody wants to be sick. But these things do occur. But that magnificent power that you can't see, can't touch, can't feel, knew these things and prepared that they should be dealt with in our time. So all of the resources outside of ourselves that would be essential in dealing with these types of consequences have been already put in the earth, on the earth, or above the earth, whether it's seen or unseen. And everything else that is needed to be able to cure every disease, every sickness on the face of the earth is instilled within men and women if they have not been aborted. And even if they've been aborted, some others are coming. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that God is real. Now, for me, talking to you ladies and gentlemen, I can talk to you this way. I'm 67, 68, how old am I? Close to 70 years old. I've been out here for a long time. I've traveled this country, speaking the same message to the people of this country that I'm speaking today. I produce videos, CDs, DVDs, brochures, and pamphlets, pass them out across this country. I've been on MySpace, Facebook. I got over 2,000 videos on Facebook and YouTube right now on Facebook. I probably got more than that out there. And what am I saying? I'm saying the same things that I'm saying to you today in different ways so that it could touch on every subject matter that you run into every day. Ran for president three times. Ran for United States senator. Uh, once a long time ago and ran again. Ran for mayor of St. Paul, Minnesota. Ran for mayor of Woodbury, Minnesota. And what for? To tell you about the peace, the prosperity, the joy of life that has been designed for you from the beginning of time. And that you are accepting a lie and you're suffering and you're going through and you act like you don't know nothing about it. And God is not blaming you because you grew up in this stuff. You grew up in this stuff. Your parents grew up in it. Their parents grew up in it. So you don't know any better. But somebody has been 
pulled aside, snatched aside, given the key, and said, go back and tell them. Unlock the door. So here I am, ladies and gentlemen. But after all of this time, I am comfortable to say today that everybody on this earth is on this earth because they are supposed to be here. You are alive, you are life, and you won't die. But you are on this earth because you're supposed to be here. And everything that we endure on this earth, whether it's crime and violence, whether it's terrorism and war, it is designed for this earth because we are no good count, no good count sucker on earth of people. That's what we are. No, man, I must really be getting going because I'm sweating up a storm. <laughs> I like to do this. Anyway, I mean, I must be giving it to you. So what am I saying? If all of us are on this planet, and this planet is hell, and we are put here because we deserve to be here, what is the message? Well, the message is, you look for those who have gone and listen to what message they left. For instance, the message of Jesus Christ. For instance, the message of Mahatma Gandhi. For instance, the message of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. For instance, the message of Malcolm X. For instance, the message of John Brown. For instance, the message of John Kennedy, the message of Robert Kennedy. What message did they leave to us? All of the people who stood up for justice, who stood up for fairness, who stood up for love and compassion. What has happened to them? Every last one of them have been killed. Every last one of them have been killed. I don't care what you say. So you ask yourself, why were they killed? And you might as well, if you're thinking, if you got a little compassion, a little heart, you'll know they were killed because they were not welcome to here. This is hell, this is low down, dirty, evil, and they were not welcome because they did not play the claim. And so they were sent out of here. And so this, to me, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll listen, it means that we are all in hell. Different parts of the world, greater hell than in others. You know, in Syria, somebody might say that's some tough hell. Lebanon, somebody might be saying that's some tough hell. Africa, Haiti, somebody might be in other places in the world, some tough hell. But even in America, there's hell. Even in China, even in Russia, even in anywhere, there's pure hell going on. Some people go through a lot of, more than others. But you can wait, and your time will come around. So the message is there. You better straighten this thing up now, or you're going down, just like everybody else. So, if I'm saying to you, all of the things that you want on this earth, the power that you can't see, can't touch, can't feel that's provided for you. Even the work that you have to do been provided for you. But because of what we had to come through, this cesspool of life that we have to experience here in America, here on this planet, we have to change or walk this path the way it leads us. No, no, no ifs and ands about it. So I'm asking all of you people who have just asked this question, how is it that every last one of you want peace and prosperity and happiness and joy in life? How is it that every one of you want those things essential for survival like oxygen and blood and food and clothing and shelter and education and health care? And the only way you can meet this is by having a job. And everybody who would, come, who would benefit from this process got a gift. What's wrong with you engaging your gift in that process of creation that you desire that would be make you owners, part owners in all the things that exist? Nobody can call themselves superior to you. Nobody can call themselves first class citizen and put you down. Nobody can call themselves somebody and you nobody. Nobody could do that. And not only that, they don't have to lie, they don't have to cheat, they don't have to steal, they don't have to gamble, they don't have to bingo, they don't have to do any of these illicit things. They don't have to be poor, have crime and violence. All of this can be excused. And I stand here all of these years of my life and I share this with you. I don't have anything to brag about. I got this. I'm somebody. I'm bigger than you. Hell no. I'm suffering just like you. And I can stand before you and say the things to you, what I'm saying, and mean it from the depths of my heart. And I do. But then you can listen to me, every last one of you, and turn your back. Oh, sure, I know you care about your mama, your dad, your brother. You care about your friends. You care about those you went to school with. You care about the citizens of your state. But do you care about the citizens of the other state? 
Do you care about black people if you're white? Do you care about white people if you're black? Do you care about gay if you're straight? Do you care about straight if you're gay? I'm asking you these things. If you say no, then you are exactly where you're supposed to be. In hell, right here in the United States, right here on this planet. Now, I'm going to tell you one last thing. I am so tired of out here marching, talking about peace and prosperity to a whole world of people who say they want it and resist it at every turn. <laughs> Man, this is funny. But I tell you what. I, when I say I'm tired, I'm tired. And as I stated earlier, I got over 200 videos posted. They say Jesus Christ didn't write one word. I got you out there looking at my face, listening to my voice, my expression. Over 200 times those videos can last from five minutes to an hour and a half. I mean, what else can I say? If you refuse me walking to you personally, if you refuse what I put before you so you can see it as a secondary method, then that means you're not interested. So I'm not wasting my time trying to be a hustler. I'm not wasting my time to try to be a bigger dog than you. So I just say to the good God Almighty, Lord, I perceive of life that is wonderful, and I'd love to live that life that is wonderful. But I am fed up with this crap that we experience every day, so... I know you are as well, and I've been doing what you told me to do. But, hey, uh, I've been begging you every night to not let me wake up the next day because I'm tired, and you still let me wake up. So I found something to say about, hey, I want to live. So what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is that I'm going to establish the basic principles of my own moving around and my own conduct, and I'm going to see you as people who need help. I don't care if you're the governor, if you're the president, I don't care if you're the senator, I don't care if you're a teacher, preacher, or just a little bit of little kid. Every last one of us on this, on this earth needs some help. We need some guidance because we are messed up terribly. So having said that without getting to my profanity, I think I'll cut this thing a little bit short one time and say, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you once again. This is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. And I've come to you live from station WEBM. That's wonderful, Eddie B. Marcus, operating smack down from the top of the sky, right wherever you are. And that the message that I bring to you is as significant as the oxygen that you breathe and the blood that flows through your veins. And in the meantime, make the right decision. Grow up. Bye-bye.